All right, we're back. Yeah. yeah. ได้ไปอยู่ในแบบเรสลิงเกมอ่ะเว้ยป้าเว้ยป้าเว้ยป้าเมื่อกี้พี่นัทบอกอย่างนึงซึ่งดีมากบอกว่าเราพูดภาษ
my really important memory. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh! Uh, oh, this is what happened pipe, that pipe. day. <laughs> um, we went to, um, this was Germany. We went on a, on a, on a radio trip. Okay. That's and right. so we just, yeah, acted out this. And actually this, this, um, this picture had um, an underlying meaning as a like peace or something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure about Two it. Two presidents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kissing each other as in like making peace with each other. Okay, people think, well, people often say, say that you're sexy, right? Now, okay. What I want to know is, is what makes a person sexy? Confidence. I think confidence is what makes someone sexiest. You can look at someone who doesn't exactly have a great body, but once he or she exudes a lot of confidence, there's something, I guess, like appealing that mm -hmm. sort of draws you in, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think confidence is, is like the most important um, component of sexiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But of course, if you have like, <laughs> you know, like other things to that complement it, like for a guy, it would be like, you know, like a, a healthy muscular body, mm -hmm. then of course it, it goes along with each other. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not just confidence. <laughs> 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 It's like confidence, but it's not a Yeah, yeah. Confidence, but also some element of mystery. Ah. Yeah, something you don't know about that person. That's what's sexy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you have any advice for kids who are being too hard on themselves? It's gonna sound a little bit vulgar, but it's in Thai, it's like chang. Mm -hmm. But in, in English, it's like what? Let it go, right? Let, let it go. What you is just that? have to <clears throat> learn to not give a yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna be polite, you know. Like, <laughs> what did it go? <laughs> yeah, don't, don't give. It was a trap. Uh, yeah, don't yeah. give. A like, don't don't give too much about everything. That's a really important life lesson because in Lahan acting or whatever, like or singing on stage, you have to like chunk all the time. No, seriously, because you have to just wing. Yeah, wing because it. the show must go on. Once you make a mistake, you cannot dwell on it. You have to like move on to the next thing. And I think that's the same with life. Once you make a mistake, just realize that you've made a mistake, but don't don't sit on it and like be worried and like beat yourself up for, for making that mistake. You know, don't you have to dwell on yeah, it. Yeah, you don't dwell on it. You just have to learn from it and you know, do better next time. And I think I think that's that's it, you know, just don't be too hard on yourself. I'm too hard on myself a lot of times, so I have to remind myself, you know, just just let it go. There'll be more chances in the future and just just keep doing better each day. You know, mm -hmm. keep keep becoming better versions of yourself. Yeah. Only compare yourself today with yourself, yourself yesterday. yesterday. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. 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 Sometimes people are too hard on themselves because they set goals that are too big, too soon. I think you have to keep moving in small steps, you know. But small steps that are that are challenging enough. Uh, if they're not challenging enough, they'll be boring and you won't improve anything. But mm -hmm. if they're too challenging for your present self, you'll just be stressed out and you'll just give up, you know. So the important thing is to take small steps, but small steps that are challenging enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you might die before you reach that goal. set small goals every day. One good thing is that then you can be proud of yourself every day, not just when you reach the final destination, you know? Yeah. Okay, it's time. Okay. 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 I happened to be in a singing competition, reality show. The first question they asked me was, what is your dream? And they were surprised. My dream is to become a chef. I want to start it from here, and then hopefully it can help build up my career as a chef in the future. Hello, my name is Thun Thachapon. I'm a chef.
if you want a success in this career, you have to work fast, clean, and organized. You just have to work fast because, like, when you're working on a restaurant, you're working as in the line cook, and then the chef will walk along the line, call out the order from the food ticket. You have to work fast, as you say, like it's two minutes, three minutes, five minutes. Also, clean is represent your uh, professional in your work. Let's say like you're cooking one hand, right? You're making, uh, you saute some pasta like this, you're using left hand. What you do with your right hand? You clean. You got two hands. This is what my chef taught me. And the last thing is organize. You need a game plan. You need your mind to be organized all the time because everybody will ask you all the time, what you're doing? What you have done? What you're doing next? So you don't even have to look what you're reaching. Even also under the, the fridge, you know exactly what you're reaching. You don't need to like bend down and look, oh, I can't find my stuff. It never happened in a kitchen. That's unprofessional. You have to know it. Like here, here, there, there, there. You can work and like even like you're closing your eye. That's what it means by working organized. Only one obstacle is consistency. People might think that 1% mistake is acceptable, but think of the other hand, like for your customer, is 100% for them because they only had one dish that making by mistake. So we cannot take that risk. So you have to keep consistency. 0% mistake, that is the hardest part to become a chef. say like a chef career is a one pizza like whole pizza for making a good food it only one slice the rest is you have to know how to run your kitchen you have to know how to hire people how to fire people how to solve all the problem like our chef the server system is not working the dishwashing machine is broken and you have to be creative to think of the new menu you have to know how to calculate the food cost so that is a lot of things to do for becoming a chef is a whole pizza. It's like the backbone of the restaurant business. It is very important. So if it's not strong enough, the restaurant will fail. Chocolate, you cannot melt directly, like to the heat, chocolate will burn. So you have to fill the pot of water, put it on stove, and you have a chocolate on a bowl, and put that bowl of chocolate on top of the pot of water and using the heat from the water to melt the chocolate. You can start out from love to cook, but not love to eat. It's different. If you only love to eat, don't become a chef. You become food blocker, you eat all, all the time. Because chef, don't get to eat your own food because you're too tired. If you love to cook at home, that's a good sign to start. So you can start cooking at home and then later on you start working on a restaurant and then you will know cooking in a restaurant, cooking at home is also different. But if you found out that you love cooking in a restaurant, so you have to work your way up there to become a chef.